Hi! It's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is announce. Let's take a look at some of the definitions for this verb. The first and most common way you'll hear the verb announce used is to mean to make a public and formal declaration or statement about a fact, an occurrence, or a plan, some, something that's going to happen in the future. A second way to use this verb announce is to mean to serve as a public speaker in order to share information. You're going to see a little later a, a related word to our verb uh, that connects to this meaning and that might make it a little easier to understand. You should know that announce is a regular verb. To make the progressive tense, we're going to drop the E and then add ing to form announce. The past tense and participle forms are, uh, for this verb are made by just adding D, since this verb already ends with an E. But the, the base verb announce is ending with that s or s sound. So our past tense ending, our ed here, is going to make a t sound. You, I hope you can hear it as I say it. Announced. Announced. You might be relieved to know that there are no additional phrasal verbs or different meanings for the verb announce. So let's move on, and it's been a couple months since we've talked about and practiced active versus passive voice. So before I make some sentences in active and passive voice, I thought it would be good to review uh, just a few rules around it. So um, most of the time in my series of videos, we focus on active voice. And you can tell a sentence is in active voice because it is beginning with the person or the thing that is responsible for the action. Some people will phrase this as the person or the thing that is doing the action. So let's look at two quick examples. First example, Jay mowed the lawn. Here, we know that J is responsible for the action of mowing. In the second sentence, Kelly drew pictures. Here, we know that Kelly is responsible for the action of drawing. So what's different in a passive voice sentence is that it is going to begin with the person or the thing that has been acted on. You might also hear this word uh, referred to as uh, the person or the thing that is receiving the action. So in a passive voice sentence, the person who is responsible for the action, the person or thing who is responsible for the action, might be included, um, but they also might not, and that's okay. If the person or uh, thing that is responsible for the action is included, you're going to see that person or thing come at the end of the sentence um, right after the preposition by. So I took my first two examples, Jay mowed the lawn and Kelly drew pictures, and I made them passive. I could say the lawn was mowed, or I could say the lawn was mowed by Jay. Either one is a fine passive sentence. Pictures were drawn or pictures were drawn by Kelly. So again, either one of those would work for passive voice. So as we work through this, there might be a few people who are wondering, well, why, why does this exist? Why are we making it so complex? So, uh, and there, there are good reasons behind this. So we might use passive voice when we don't know the person or the thing that is responsible for the action. Another instance where we might use it is if the person or thing who is responsible for the action, just it just isn't important. We really want to kind of focus on the object, the thing or the object uh, that is being acted on. So 
Uh, and that's one way to sort of have people focus on it is have that come at the beginning of our sentences. So now that we know a little bit about the differences between active and passive voice, today I have some examples for you using our verb of the day announce. And we're going to do an example in active voice and an example in passive voice. And we'll focus just on the simple past tense today. So whether it's active or passive, in the simple past tense, we are talking about an action that uh, was completed at a definite time. Um, could, have been, could be uh, a minute ago in the past. It could be an hour. It could be days, months, or years. And so, you know, in either active or passive voice, the exact time that something happened, it might not be stated because it is implied as part of a, a bigger conversation or a longer passage. So first, let's start with what we know best. Let's look at affirmative active voice. Here is an example sentence. The company announced the winners of the contest last week. So you can see here, I'm using my ED and D. Uh, that's going to be true no matter what my subject is. Um, and here we do have that time signal last week, um, giving us a bit of a clue that this uh, occurred at a definite time in the past. If I want to use passive voice in the simple past tense, I'm going to use a past tense form of B. So that's was or were depending on what my subject is. And then I'm going to use the participle form of the verb. So here's the same sentence, but now we don't know who is responsible for the action of announcing. So the winners of the contest were announced last week. So again, maybe we really want to focus on the, uh, in this case, the people uh, that are receiving the action. That's what's important. So that might be a reason someone would use the path of more. Next, let's look at negative sentences. And we'll start by looking at the active voice example first. The city didn't announce a timeline for building the new courthouse. So here, to make negative simple past tense, I'm using did not and I use the contraction form as a native speaker. That feels very natural to me. But if it's easier for you to say did not, that's fine. No one will misunderstand you. Uh, and then I'm using the base verb to describe this uh, action that wasn't actually completed at a definite time in the past. So uh, if I instead want to make this passive, Again, I'm going to use a past tense form of be, then not. And again, as a native speaker, you might hear me use weren't or wasn't. And then we'll use the participle form of the verb. So here's the same sentence, but this time in passive voice. A timeline for building the new courthouse wasn't announced. And again, it could just be obvious um, that uh, who is responsible for making this announcement. So it's another reason someone might instead use the passive voice. Finally, let's look at making yes or no questions in the simple past tense. In the active voice, I'm going to start with did, then I'll have my subject, and then the base verb. Here is an example. Did the Department of Public Health announce the number of new COVID-19 cases earlier today? If Instead, it's sort of implied, well, of course, the public health department is communicating this information. I could use the passive voice. And here, I'm going to start with my past tense form of me, so was or were. Uh, then I'm going to have that object, what is receive, in this case, what is receiving the action, followed by the participle form of the verb were the number of new COVID-19 cases announced earlier today. So finally, let's take a look at some words that are related to our verb announce. 
The first uh, word we're going to look at today is a noun. It's announcement. It can have a couple different meanings. The first is just a public statement about a fact, an occurrence, or a plan. So here's an example. The flight attendant is going to make an announcement. You've been on a plane, uh, you have probably experienced this uh, event or this action of, of someone making a public statement, perhaps related to safety or um, our schedule when, when the plane might be landing or, or some other information. A second way to use the noun announcement is to mean a notice that announces something such as birth death, or marriage. And again, it's probably most uh, common to hear this form of the word in reference to something that's in a newspaper. So here's an example sentence. Did you see their marriage announcement in yesterday's paper? And here, paper is just short for newspaper. Uh, I feel like I've uh, heard many older adults shorten that. Um, Younger people not always regularly subscribing to physical newspapers, um, so they might word it a little bit differently. The next noun we're going to take a look at is announcer. This is going to connect to the second definition of our verb announce. An announcer is a person who introduces or gives information about programs on radio or television. So here's an example sentence. She's been a play-by-play -play announcer for 15 years. You'll see this noun uh, or hear it used uh, in reference to sports uh, a great deal. So uh, if you're an avid watcher of sports on television, you're probably used to hearing two or three, maybe four voices describing what is occurring during uh, a game. And those people, we would describe their job as an announcer. The last word I'm going to leave you with today is an adjective. It's unannounced. And you might notice the prefix at the beginning of this adjective, un. Un means not. So here, uh, one possible definition for unannounced is not publicized. So not a public statement. Right? Here is an example of that usage. Protesters held an unannounced protest yesterday. So uh, here something was not publicized. In this case, not shared on social media. Um, and there could be a, a particular reason for that. Um, but I saw that ha uh, headline recently and I made a note to include it here. A second way you might hear unannounced use is to mean done without previous notice, which should sound uh, a bit similar to not publicized. But what's different about the second definition is sort of the unexpected element to it. So uh, let's look at an example sentence. The government official made an unannounced visit to the troops. Um, and this is something that happens pretty often uh, out of safety. Uh, different go government officials might not publicize or give notice that they plan to travel abroad, uh, particularly uh, to an area where there's a conflict. They don't want to uh, have enemies have notice that a high level official is going to be present. I will tell you that unannounced visit is a really common phrase. Uh, and again, this idea is that it's very unexpected. So the, the people who are receiving uh, the visitor or visitors um, might be a little surprised or shocked. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you have a great day.